Our guest in this first segment is uh, John Doyle, former delegate and a current candidate for state senate as well. John, good morning. Good morning, both of you, or I, all of you. Is there anybody else besides you and Gilstrap? Mr. Ma- Mr. Matt Harvey, you know him from Jefferson County. Oh, Matt, yeah, I know Matt. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, John. Morning. John, I take it you're in a place this morning where it's not as noisy as last week. No, and I got it worked out uh, uh, with, with either Mike and, a, and, a, and another friend of mine. Uh, each of them said that uh, that at eight thirty five, if I'm in the building, uh, I can use their uh, uh, I, I can use their their offices and even call you on a landline. Uh, so, in fact, I did that yesterday with WPM. They wanted me on for about ten minutes to talk about Dale Manuel, and so uh, I was able to talk from the building on a landline and it worked out fine now i'm still at the hotel uh, i'll be headed out up to the uh, building as soon as, uh, as as soon as we're done here at 8 30 so this worked out fine yeah i'm in the quiet of my hotel room yeah and john and what you bring that up uh, a couple of words and maybe from matt too about uh, dale Manuel, who passed away you know he was he was an absolutely class person an absolute a, a prince of a human being he and I worked together in the, in the legislature for 12 years, uh, and we both represented Jefferson County. Uh, he was on the Education Committee and, and as vice chair and then vice chair of judiciary. I was vice chair of finance pretty much the whole time, and it, uh, it, it, it really worked out well. We helped each other a lot. Uh, he understood K-12 education uh, a lot better than I did. I understood higher education a lot better than he did. And and we really worked together as a team. Matt, did you know uh, Dale well? I did, yes. I, I got to know him probably around 2012 is when I first met him. And then certainly when I ran for office, I got to know him more. And then after I was elected, uh, worked with him. He stayed uh, beyond his delegate duties, I mean, he was a county commissioner, from what I understand, it, for two terms. I wasn't in office then, um, but he remained active in local um, boards and given back to the community. And I did work with him in that capacity, like on the community corrections board. Yeah, we did have Dale on the yeah, show he, once or he twice. Was on, he was on Parks and Rec uh, after he um, uh, w- w- went off the county commission, and that was a passion of his was um, outdoor recreation. John, I want to turn your attention to this legislative session. I understand not a lot has happened to date, but that's about to change. I was uh, talking to a delegate yesterday off the air, and they told me that a lot of stuff is about to happen. Uh, Do you have any insight as to what types of bills might be getting some momentum in the near future? Well, yeah, the the bill we talked about last week, that Women's Bill of Rights, was put on hold for a while. And finally brought out again, and it passed yesterday uh, the, the, in the House. It's a House bill, so it goes to the Senate. Uh, and again, it's a bill that uh, that we talked about last week that is has a has a is really seriously misnamed. It's actually an anti-trans bill, uh, and it, and uh, uh, the, all the all eleven Democrats and one Republican voted against it. Uh, so it goes to the Senate. And there's another one that uh, uh, has passed the House and is waiting over in the Senate and probably will be taken up uh, that uh, folks that I'm lobbying for are very much uh, concerned about. And that's the bill that says that you can essentially says that any any volunteer community air monitoring uh, is isn't going to be considered serious. Uh, I think the bill has a fatal flaw. It says that uh, any such information gained from volunteer air monitoring may not be considered by the courts. Uh, I've talked to some of the legislators who are lawyers who have practiced before the state Supreme Court, and they pretty much said, and I'm going to defer to Matt Harvey on this, that when the legislature writes a statute saying, here's something that you, the, the judicial branch, may not consider as evidence, they, they they pretty much go, ha, ha, ha. You want Matt's opinion on that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> for, I'm not aware of any examples of that, but um, I, I, I could see, I could see, yeah, I, 
I don't really know. I'll be honest yeah. with you. Like, I, think, like, I mean, at the, at the very least, it's presumptuous on the part of the legislature. I, 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 th- I guess it would depend what what, the, what the, it should or should not what, be considered as evidence. Well, my hesitation is is it, it. I think it would depend on the subject matter, and probably in this subject matter, yeah. I would I would say that that would be. Now, there's a certain things they can do. For example, and and I know you're familiar with this, Matt. A spouse cannot be compelled to testify against their spouse. That, that's a that, that's a law, and, the, and, that's and right. the judicial branch honors it. But that's not saying there's a piece of evidence that can't be admitted. Right. It's 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 a it's a privilege that's given to the the accused that they can that they have that they can say, well, I can't yeah. let my spouse testify. Now, that what, what if the spouse is complicit well, in, the, in the commission of a crime, though? It, it, well, that's a whole different set of factors to consider. Like if you're a co-conspirator or an aider and a better, you know, you're a co-defendant. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you that doesn't apply to situations like domestic violence. Like you can't you, you can't right. claim spousal privilege when you when you're the victim of a or when the person is the victim of. Sure. That makes sense. That seems like a uh, good morning, John. It's John. Um, it, it seems like a pretty random uh, bill to put out there that deals with voluntary uh, air monitoring. What what's the history of it? Where does what's this born of? It's a rock wool uh, bill basically here, John. Uh, no, it's all over the state. Uh, it primarily came from uh, the uh, areas that have uh, uh, that that have had a lot um, uh, a lot of chemicals. That it came really came from the Kanawha Valley uh, because of all the chemical productions here. Uh, 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 the uh, uh, Dupont uh, uh, plant there in the Institute and and another Dupont plant uh, uh, up the river uh, at, uh, at at Rand uh, that uh, began spewing uh, dangerous chemicals. And they've got these little purple boxes. They're actually pretty accurate that citizens can be trained to use. The, uh, there are basically three lines of monitoring. You have the stacks, which the, which the company installs the monitors in the stacks. And then you've got what are called fence line monitors, uh, which will monitor the air as it leaves the property. But then you've got the the third line would be these volunteer uh, uh, monitors that are maybe a mile or so away just to determine uh, the quality of the air, you know, in the in that general area of of that particular plant. So it's these that industry doesn't want uh, any consideration in court. And the problem is, well, and now I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The DEP has monitors generally uh, to monitor the, 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 the air in a given region like the Potomac Highlands. But it doesn't get down to like if, if there's a plant five miles away from you uh, and there's, there's a leak. It can't, there are only 18 of the DEP's monitors and they're only in 13 counties. There are two in Berkeley and then I think you have to get to Randolph County before you get the next one. So uh, these things tend to fill in the gap and DEP says that anytime one of these things uh, shows a a spike they will get right there and check it anyway I actually you know it's it's a I I think this is one of those bills that uh, uh, has a solution where there's not a problem you know in my experience and I used to do a lot of industrial hygiene monitoring back in the past and some environmental monitoring but that's not really my expertise and I think one of the concerns just extrapolating out I I really not dialed into this topic but it makes sense to me and in my experience that once you have unofficial monitoring which would be the volunteer monitoring uh, those that those who monitor are doing it with an agenda in mind and what happens is you end up with with skewed results. I remember there was um, one place we were doing asbestos monitoring and the the results of an asbestos monitor, it's, they, they fall naturally with, within, I won't go into the esoterica of it, but it, it falls naturally within very small well, guidelines. John, I, but no, no, no I, wait a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Remember, let me finish, the, let me finish, let me finish. The put in the stacks by or the not. company, they're put there by people that have an agenda too. So just because someone has a point of view 
doesn't mean they don't have accurate information. I do think the the better solution would be for us to provide DEP with the resources to have a lot more of, of their of their monitors around the state that can pick this stuff up. Uh, that would be the solution. Um, but um, yeah. Well, go ahead and finish your point, John. Gilstrap. No, the point was that we employees would uh, put chunks of asbestos, actually go and pull out chunks of asbestos and put it into the, the little cassettes that we use to do the monitoring. It couldn't possibly happen in reality. It's just not, it doesn't happen that I way. I don't know how you would do that to these little purple, well, they're not little, these purple boxes. Well, I don't know how you do it either. Like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of extrapolating out from my uh, previous experience. And then, as far as environmental uh, uh, concerns, if, in fact, the monitor in the stack and at the fence line show acceptable levels, it's very hard to conceive of a circumstance where, you know, it's the, the inverse square law is a thing. So as you get farther and farther away, the concentrations get less and less. So I'm just throwing this out as, as reasons perhaps why this is not a bad idea. That is correct. But remember, there have been corporations in the past in West Virginia that have misled the public. And the big concern, another big concern is that, and this is not air pollution, this is water pollution, is the chemical spill that occurred down here 10 years ago uh, from Freedom Industries. You know, they're, they're, I'm not saying that all companies are bad actors. Most of them are good actors. But every now and then you get a bad actor. Uh, and, and if the, the bad actor uh, with the agenda is in control of the monitors at the stacks, now you've uh, you, you've got, you've got a, an air pollution problem in, in in the community and you don't know it. John, I want to ask you about House Bill forty two ninety nine. This seems to be getting some momentum. Legislation permitting teachers to carry concealed firearms as designated school protection officers. It's up for a vote in the full House of Delegates. I think this is this the first time it's gotten this far. Maybe. Well, uh, I'm not sure. I, it was it, it was voted out of the Judiciary Committee yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do, you, what do you think of this? 20, 21 to 3 vote, I think it was. All three Democrats voted against it. Uh, all the Republicans that were there voted for it. I think one person was missing. Can I assume you're opposed to this? Huh? Can I assume that you are opposed to this bill? Uh, y- yes. And, and the reason is, I remember in 2018, when we had the, 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 la- the, the teacher strike, uh, this is when I was not in the legislature. When I was in in 19, I got elected in in, in November of, 20, of 18, and then they had another teacher strike in 19, and I was in. But this was the year before, and I was lobbying then. So I wasn't able to get in the building with my pass. I had to stand in line with everybody. And I remember standing in line trying to get in the building uh, with a group of teachers, and, they, and, and, and I just saw the group behind them was from Jefferson County. So I went back and joined them. And as we very slowly meandered into the building, some of them began talking about this. And one of those teachers said, you know, not only do I not want any of my teachers in the school with a gun, not only do I not want to have a gun, I don't want any other teacher in my school with a gun. And if I ever find out that's the day I quit. And all of them said, yes. The, I just think we're doing too many things to chase teachers away. To get this designation, any educator seeking it would need to provide proof of a valid concealed carry permit and a certificate demonstrating completion of a security protection officer training program. The training would need to include mitigation techniques, neutralization of potential threats and active shooters, de-escalation techniques, crisis intervention, and more. I imagine there's a lot more to it than that, too. Well, No, I concede, Rob, the bill's a lot better than it used to be, Mm -hmm. which is why I think it has a legitimate chance of passing this time, and, and it will pass. Have you gotten any feel for how the Senate is approaching that uh, their version of that bill? Uh, I think they'll pass it. Right. Has any of the teachers union did any sort of uh, polling with with their members on this issue that you're aware of, John? And no, I am not. But thank you, Matt. I'm going to ask. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I would assume that they ask about many various issues that are quality of profession type um, issues in, in, in their profession. I think so long as some guidelines are met for this and the training is appropriate, I would be in favor of this. I, I, I think sometimes the critics of these types of bills make it sound like we're just passing out pistols willy-nilly to any teacher who wants one, and they're going to put them on top of their desk just in case some kind of trouble breaks out. From what I've discussed with the people who, who uh, put these types of bills forward, uh, with Nate Harmon when he was sheriff, uh, and the, the program he was trying to get into Berkeley County Schools, it's, it's not going to be that simple. And the weapon would be locked up. Now, nothing's 100% foolproof, but I would much rather have some options. If some idiot comes into a school, some idiot like we had in Kansas City yesterday, I would much rather have some options to neutralize that person with a weapon than not have any. Maybe we, we, we emphasize in these shooting situations, it's run, hide, and fight, right? In that order. So run, I get, I'm all, I'm, I love the idea of running away from danger. It seems the best way to, to, to do it. Um, I don't think in schools that's that's done very much because the kids have to stay well, sort of organized. Very often. Right. Well, they so down. and then there's hide, which means you wait your turn and hope that the police get there to neutralize this guy before he neutralizes you. And as we've seen, they don't always burst into the building. No, they don't. Sometimes they gather in strength of 400 outside in Uvalde and they don't do anything. The other option is to fight. And it makes no sense to me that if there's if there's somebody who is trained and willing and to be able to shoot back, you know, rather than just wait your turn to be shot, shooting back makes all the sense in the world to me. I would imagine well, that maybe the only... Just, th why don't we just have uh, a, a, a police officer stationed at each school? We agree on that, John. Sure. As, as an alternative, that would be ideal. However, the legislature does not provide the funding for that. Precisely. And I think if you were to ask the the average police officer who's under fire, if he could have backup from somebody else who's a good guy, he'd say that's okay. Like I say, the bill in its present form is a lot better yes. than the ones that, that they've had the last couple of years. Uh, so, yeah. John Hardy uh, I, I had guess a... I just, uh, it, it, there's this uh, uh, um, uh, adage that, you know, if you, carry all, if you carry this argument to its logical extreme, every single citizen should have a nuclear weapon, and that way everybody's protected. Well, that's obviously extreme. Um, yes. What, what, go ahead, Matt Harvey. You were about to say. Yeah, I would logical extreme. And, and, and again, uh, obviously, the schools need protection. And um, the trick is to find the best way to do it. I, I was just going to say that Delegate Hardy has a bill that would put armed officers in the schools if I was wanting to defeat this this bill with arm and the teachers, I would push that other bill mm -hmm. as let's see if we can get this one passed first. Oh, and I'm in favor of that. Yeah, I always have been. Yeah, uh, for four years when I was on the education committee, we we discussed that, and 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 pretty much most of us agreed there should be a a trained security officer in every school in the state. But but as Rob, I think it was Rob that said, uh, yeah, but the legislature is not going to come up with the money to, to do that. Yeah, and so the, so as a result, the next best solution is to have a teacher or more in the school or another staff member who is yeah. trained and can do this and, and volunteers well, to do it. John, let me ask you a question then. So if the legislature passed a bill that said you have to have an armed guard in each school and and – you know that meets these qualifications the that's john hardy's proposing is that something that is as we've heard with other education bills that is looks like the legislature is, is mandating it but it can be taken as a suggestion by the school boards because of the this the way that the constitution's written in other words it would be it would authorize uh the, the one you have in mind it sounds like to me would authorize the local boards of education to do this if if they saw fit. Correct. It, would that have the practical uh, effect? I, I actually prefer that, and you're right, uh, And w which, if you all don't mind, that's a segue to another bill, uh, which I've talked about before on the air, 
and that's the bill that uh, uh, would uh, 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 would prohibit county commissions from having any rule governing agriculture that was stronger than any state regulation, and 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 particularly when it comes to water, since there is zero state regulation. Uh, it, there's a there's a there's a chance that uh, counties would would be prohibited from requiring building permits, uh, particularly in a in a floodplain. So anyway, that was Senate Bill 171, and it passed two days ago. It's going to the governor, and he'll sign it. That's one I've been fighting. And again, it's this old question of of, of should the control should the power be at the state level or the local level? And, and I remember when I was in the legislature and in the majority. All the Democrats thought it thought the power should be at the state level, uh, and 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 the Republicans all all uh, stood for local control. And now that the Republicans are in the majority, it's switched. It's the Republicans who want all the power to be in Charleston, and it's the Democrats who are who are uh, standing for local control. Funny how that works, huh, John? Huh? Funny how that works, huh? I know. When you when, when you have the, the power, you, you say, I want to keep it. <laughs> this doesn't seem so bad. Now power in control, right? Hey, John, we're out of time. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Have uh, a great day. 835 next week? Yes, sir. I do believe that is correct. Okay, thanks. Thank Bye. you, John.